Today, I decided to review the top five best all-in-one desktops in the market for this year. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I tried to list them based on their price, quality, durability, and more. To see the price and find out more information about these all-in-one desktops, you can check out the description below. Also, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the latest technology reviews. Okay, so let's get started with the video. At number 5, it's the Dell XPS 27. The Dell XPS 27 is the latest all-in-one from Dell with a newer processor, AMD's latest graphics card, and a whole host of other features including decent audio and a 4K touch panel display. It weighs 17 kilograms, which is pretty heavy if we compare it to some other all-in-one desktops such as the Microsoft Surface Studio. It has two joints of adjustment, both in the height and the angle of the display, allowing you to adjust it to a very showing you to adjust it to a very shallow angle for more comfort when using the touchscreen. Most of the ports are located on the back of the device bearing one USB port which is on the right side along with a power button. A headphone jack and SD card reader are on the left side. Located right at the back in a sunken panel is the HDMI port, four USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports using USB Type-C, display port and a gigabit Ethernet port. The Dell XPS 27 has a 4K 10-point touchscreen which equals to 2840 by 2160 resolution. Considering how big the display is, the overall brightness is decent above 330 nits and it's very accurate in color performance. There's also a webcam on the display which is below the logo and in between the speakers. It has a 720p quality which is acceptable enough if you want to Skype but I'd say it's not really suitable for professional things like streaming. It has a pair of speakers and a fuse to watch movies or listen to your favorite music, no matter the genre. The XPS 27 comes with a premier wireless keyboard and mouse KM717, which are pretty good and people seem to be loving them. They're not suitable for gaming, but they are great for doing office work. Overall, the Dell XPS 27 all-in-one PC is a great device and something which can be used on a daily basis as it's got a decent array of specs for gaming and graphic design or web development. If you're looking for a complete device with great audio and a decent display, the Dell XPS 27 is a valid consideration. At number 4, it's the HP NV34 Desktop. The NV34 is an all-in-one desktop with a curved screen, something rare when it comes to all-in-one desktops. It sports an elegant yet practical design, produces superior sound, incorporates some atypical features and delivers solid general purpose performance all for a reasonable price. As performance, all for a reasonable price. The base is a nice combination of metal and fabric covered speakers. It even looks great from the back. It's a beautiful industrial design and it immediately pulled me in. When it comes to curved screens, there's a balance that needs to be met. Too much curve and it's going to be distracting. Too little and that defeats the purpose of the curve. Compared to the old version, HP slightly decreased the curve radius and trimmed the bezel significantly. Though it's the same size panel as the old model, it looks much bigger and vastly more attractive. The 34-inch ultra-wide display is great, with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, curved display and 3440 by 1440 resolution. Many action movies are made at this resolution, but I used it primarily to get a ton of work done. I felt like the size of the display greatly increased my productivity. I was able to work, run two Google Chrome browser tabs, Word and YouTube all at the same time. In the front, it has four Bang & Olufsen tuned speakers, which sound quite good and can get pretty loud. This is rare when talking about all-in-one computers, but HP did it perfectly. You can move your hand in a circular motion on the stand and adjust the volume accordingly. When it comes to the connectivity, it has four USB ports, an HDMI output and input, Ethernet jack, headphone jack, an SD card reader, and a Thunderbolt 3 over USB-C port for future add-ons. One thing I didn't like about it is that the display doesn't provide the 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160 pixels, currently preferred by most high-end all-in-one systems. The actual resolution is 3440 by 1440, or 109.7 pixels per inch or PPI, which is still more than twice the resolution of a conventional HD, 
1920 by 1080 and the NV34 for video, photography or gaming. Overall, I think that gamers and business users alike will lament the lack of expansion and upgrade potential, while video buffs and Netflix addicts might simply prefer to buy a 4K display for their existing PC. At number 3, it's the Lenovo Idea Center 700. The Idea Center 700 packs a rich 4K display and Intel's innovative RealSense camera into an upgradable and fairly affordable package. It might not be the best looking all-in-one, but it hits a wonderful sweet spot, balancing price, performance and awesome features. It has a 24-inch display which can be tilted 5 degrees forward or 25 degrees backward. It doesn't offer any height adjustments, which is a bit of a bummer. The front of the computer boasts an edge-to-edge -edge glass screen, but it also has a fairly wide bezel which is roughly 1 inch on the sides and just over 1 inch on the top and bottom. It has a generous port selection, selection, meaning you'll find two USB 2.0 ports, a USB 3.0 input, an Ethernet jack, and both HDMI in and HDMI out connections in the back, and an SD card slot and a headphone mic jack in an easy-to-reach enclave on the left edge. Unlike HP's NV34, the Idea Center 700 has a 4K touch display which is detailed enough for work and vibrant enough for when you want to kick back and enjoy a movie. It's perfectly responsive to the touch, whether you're pinching to zoom into a web page or doodling in paint with all 10 fingers at once. It has a pair of JBL speakers which surprised me with how good they sounded, especially how loud the maximum volume went. This is a huge deal for people like me that hate wearing headphones all the time. Lenovo's desktop ships with a wireless keyboard and mouse combo, both of which are as plain as can be. So, if you decide to go with this model, I suggest you get a good mouse and keyboard to go with it. With it. I was surprised to see that it can handle games pretty well. I would mainly suggest this all-in-one desktop for office use, but if you do some light gaming on the side, it won't let you down. The best part about it is that it's easily upgradable, even if you get the cheapest configuration in the beginning. Overall, if you're looking for an all-in-one computer system that performs well and handles most tasks with ease, as well as one that has the ability to be easily upgraded, you should definitely take a look at the Lenovo Idea Center AIO 700 and the various configurations it has to offer. At number two, it's the Microsoft Surface Studio 2. The Surface Studio 2 is a personal computing workstation, a glossy hulk of a display with a sleek aluminium frame, a minimal base and a hinge that lets you tilt the touchscreen display so that it hovers nearly flat above your desk. The Surface Studio 2 looks exactly the same as its first generation with a grey magnesium case, a gorgeous thin 28-inch inch display and mirror-finished metal arms connecting the two. It's a design that's both striking and simple. With the choice of NVIDIA GTX 1060 or 1070 graphics, you'll actually be able to play some modern games like Forza Horizon 4, PUBG and more with maxed out graphics settings. The Surface Studio 2 isn't made for gamers, so I was surprised to see that it runs those games flawlessly. The machine CPU upgrade is a similar story. Now it includes the 7th generation Core i7-7820HQ, which is better at handling 4K video than the 6th generation processor from its predecessor. When it comes to the port selection, it has a generous range of them. There are four USB 3.0 ports, including one high power, an SD card reader, USB-C, gigabit Ethernet port, and of course, a headphone jack. The touchscreen display itself has 13.5 million pixels to be exact, with a resolution of 4500 of 515 nits. It's great for watching video, editing images, videos, and more. The most interesting thing about this computer is the zero gravity hinge, named as such because of the way the display appears to hover above the base when you've tilted the screen way back. If you're an artist, this hinge will let you turn the massive screen to a huge tablet and the result is an extremely natural feeling experience as you draw and write on the screen. The studio has eight speakers built into the display and another two in the base and it delivers Dolby Audio Premium sound, although I prefer external speakers when listening to music. Mainly, I think that the Studio 2 is made for artists and designers, so overall, if you want the hands-down best drawing experience available, the Surface Studio 2 delivers. If you want to ditch your Wacom tablet or expand your hands-on digital artistry, you won't find anything better. 
That's why I recommend it to anyone that's looking for a new AI. Recommend it to anyone that's looking for a new AIO desktop. At number one, it's the Apple iMac Pro 27 inch. The iMac Pro is a powerful, sleek and svelte all-in-one PC with a familiar iMac form factor. It's an incredibly powerful machine built for creatives and professionals. It's basically a finely tuned beast with powerful components that'll optimize your workflow to mind-bending degrees. It's expensive, sure, but if you can save some time on all your projects, the iMac Pro will pay for itself before you know it. Time is money after all. I'm sure some Apple haters will watch this video and disagree with me, but please keep watching because I used to be an Apple hater too. At the edge, the iMac Pro is just 5mm thick, meaning it doesn't hog too much space on your desk. It also comes in at just 0.7kg, which means you won't break your back moving it from desk to desk. If you've seen Apple display, you know that they're incomparable. This model has a 5K resolution and supports the wide-colored DCI-P3 gamut. Not only is it huge, pin-sharp and incredibly accurate, it also supports a wide range of different color profiles for a variety of different professional use cases. The iMac Pro is the company's most powerful machine to date and intended to handle pretty much anything a business can throw at it. With an 18-core Intel Xeon W processor, 128GB of DDR4 RAM memory and AMD's Radeon Pro Vega 64 graphics chip in the top spec configuration, it's fair to say that this machine is an absolute monster. We used to disagree with the port selection of Apple products, but this model has a generous amount of them including 10 gigabit Ethernet, an SDXC card reader, 4 USB 3.0 ports and 4 Thunderbolt 3 inputs. I I consider this all-in-one desktop to be the best one in the market. However, I also consider it to be the most expensive one. With that being said, this product isn't for everyone. If you're a professional that uses their computer all the time for heavy-duty tasks such as video editing, then this is one of the few computers that won't let you down. To conclude, I would say that the latest Apple iMac is a thing of beauty. Not only does it look excellent, it's got sterling performance and an absolutely first-rate display. If you're an artist or a designer, you need this in your arsenal, because it'll make everything easier for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions related to these products, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back.